Welcome to this tutorial of 10 tips for beginners in Adobe InDesign that will help you speed up your workflow. Be sure to subscribe for future tips, tools, and tutorials on graphic design and expanding your design skills and business. In order to scroll through a bunch of fonts quickly to see which one you want to use for your design, first using the type tool, you go and select the type you would like to change the font of. Then you go up to your character panel and select the font there that is already being used and go to your keyboard and using the up and down arrows, you can scroll through all of the fonts that you have loaded into your system, which saves so much time when you are quickly trying to find a font. Then when you're done and you found the one you wanna use, you go back to your selection tool and click outside of your type. In order to keep consistent font letting, tracking colors, etc. throughout a design where there will be a lot of copy, it's very important to have paragraph styles and character styles. This is done by first choosing the fonts, colors, etc. of your paragraph and then opening the paragraph styles panel. So what you're going to do is go up to window, styles, paragraph styles, and this will bring up this panel called paragraph styles. Then you will, while having the text selected that you're going to be applying the paragraph style to, hit create new style. You double click that one, you can name it headline for this case. And you can see here, you can go and change when you're actually in the panel itself, the options, you can change the size, you can change the indents and spacing, if it's centered, if it's right aligned, you can change the different, adding a border, you can make the character color a different color. And if you have the preview on is when you can see those changes made live. So I'm going to keep the changes I made in the options and hit OK. So now you can see I have here a paragraph style called headline. Now let's say you want to make a new headline and it's going to be called real design and you want to apply the same paragraph style. All you do is go over to your paragraph styles while selecting that type and hit headline and it will have the same exact style as the earlier one. Now let's say you wanna change one word in this headline to being pink. So you're gonna go over, make it pink, and then go over to your character styles, which if you don't have that open is under window, styles, character styles. Now you're gonna do the same thing, go and make a new style, open it up, call it pink type. And again, you can change the size, the color, if you want it underlined, and you can see it live there. We're not gonna change anything, so we're just gonna hit OK. And now, let's say you want to have another word in a different paragraph with that same character style. So now all you have to do is highlight that other word and go over and hit pink type, and it'll apply it. A great thing about using paragraph styles, if you want to change something in the future on your document, all you have to do is go into the paragraph style options. Let's say we want to change the overall font to be Garamond or Futura. So now all we had to do is select it in the style options and it will change it universally throughout the whole document. It's gonna save you so much time. The same thing applies to character styles. You can just select, double click it, and you wanna change, let's say the color, instead of pink, you wanna have it blue. So there it will change it universally to blue. Then you can call it blue type. These work similarly to paragraph and character styles. First, what we're gonna do is go to window, styles, object styles. So we pull up that panel, we'll put it over here. Now let's create an object. So for this, I'm just gonna create a rectangle. I am going to make it red. Gonna make a drop shadow. 
this is not important. I'm just setting it up so you can see as an example, so you can see the different styles that are being applied. So what I'm gonna do is now do create a new style in the object styles panel. I'm gonna call it red box. And just like in the other style options, you can go in and manually change it here and see it live. But for this case, we're not gonna do any changes. We're just gonna hit okay. All right, now I am going to go and make another box. And I'm gonna go and while the box is selected, I'm gonna hit an object style, red box. Now it applied the exact same style as the previous red box because they are both now in that object style. So that's super helpful. Also, if you have a lot of different images or graphics throughout your document that you would like to have a consistent style applied to. These are pages where you apply information such as page numbers or some design element that you want to appear on every page. And then you only need to adjust those master pages. They're in the pages panel and by double selecting this A master, you see here, it will open up the master pages. For this example, we are going to add page numbers. So I'm going to put the type tool, gonna go up to type, insert special character, markers, current page number. Now let's make this 11 point type. All right, so now I would like to also have that on the right side. We'll make it right aligned. So now let's look in our actual document. By going back to the pages panel, you can see in this section here is where the actual document is. These are your actual pages. The master pages are above it. So to go back to your actual pages, you just double click there and you can see the page number is there and the page number is there. And it is locked. You can't actually access it unless you go back to your master pages. Now let's say we would like to have a style applied to certain pages, but not every page in the document. We can go back up to the master pages and go up to its little menu, select new master. Now this is going to prompt this window and if you wanna keep the page numbers, it's advised that you base this master on a master, which has those numbers applied. So you're gonna hit okay. And now for the sake of this new master page, we're gonna draw a line across it. just so you can see it. And now we're gonna go down into our actual pages and select the pages we would like to have this line applied to. Right click on those pages, apply master to pages, apply master B master, okay. So now if we go back, we can see in our actual document that those two pages are with a master applied, so you only see the page numbers. And then if you go down to the next two pages, they have the B master applied. Sometimes when you're working on a document, you will want to have it divided into columns or rows to ensure proper alignment. So you go up to layout, create guides. This will allow you to set up the amount of rows or columns you would like to have in your document. And this is the gutter, which is the space between these rows and columns. This helps to keep spacing consistent. And you can have the guides go just to the margins, which are these purple lines, or you can fit it all the way to the edge of the page. It's up to you. To access this, you go to Window, Layers, 
And this tool is very helpful when you're designing packaging or any type of design that requires art type and a template. It works similarly to Photoshop where you have these different layers and the top one will have any objects in it will be above the ones that are below it. For this sake, we are going to have template here. And let's just say for this tutorial, we're just gonna put a simple rectangle. And let's say that's the guide for a box package design that you are creating. Now, if you lock that layer, you won't be able to access this, which is great for when you're creating art underneath it. So let's just, for this sake, create a box that is blue. So you can see the template layer is showing above the blue layer. Now you can go in and put type on the type layer And we're gonna move type above art. See how you just grab it and you can just move it wherever you want to. We can turn off the template whenever we want to as well. Then when you're doing any type of design where you're turning over to a printer, I always like to duplicate the type layer and then actually do outline type. So then I'll select the type. I'll go up to type create outlines, and that way it will preserve the font. And no matter what happens in translation between my document and the printer, I know that this will appear as an object and they won't have to worry about loading the fonts. So that's great to have this other option of these layers for that reason as well. And just the same, you can turn them on and off at your will. There's the template. And that's how it works. If you do need to outline your type, but have bullet points, they will disappear unless you convert them to type. You can see here, oh, they're gone. The way to avoid this is you select the bullet points, go up to type, bulleted and numbered lists, convert bullets to text. Now, when you go to create the outlines, they will be preserved. If you want to get rid of a specific color and replace it with another, open your window, color, swatches, go over to your swatches panel, and let's say we want to get rid of this blue color universally and replace it with this dark blue. So what we're gonna do is just throw it in the trash. It'll prompt this window that says remove swatch and replace with. You're gonna select that darker blue you wanna use. Hit okay. And now it will be completely changed throughout your document. After you complete a project, it's a great idea to package this up to collect all the links, fonts, and files into one location. You do this by going up to File, Package, hit Package. For this sake, we're gonna just put it on our desktop and you can choose what you want the folder to be called. This is gonna copy the fonts, the links. It's gonna save it as an IDML as well as an InDesign document, which is great because if you happen to open it or somebody opens this later on in a way earlier version of InDesign, they'll still be able to open it. And you also want to include a PDF in there so that someone can see what it originally should look like. All right, so once those are all selected, whichever ones you want to have in that package, you hit package. Okay. And then we can go view it tutorial folder, and you can see in there it has the document fonts, it has the link, it has the IDML, it has the original InDesign file, and then it has a PDF version of the document. It's really great to do this to keep your business more organized, and so then you can archive any earlier versions and just have that final version. The way to do this is to put all the panels in the positions you want them to be in. Let's say we're just gonna throw all these here for the sake of this 
tutorial. You then go up to Window, Workspace, New Workspace. I'm going to put Tutorial Workspace, hit OK. So that, let's say you move some things around while you're working, but you want to go back to the way you really liked your workspace set up. You go to Workspace, Reset Tutorial Workspace, and it'll put them all back to the way they were. I have a few different workspaces saved. This is Lauren's favorite. We go to Reset Lauren's favorite, and it'll go back to the way I usually have it. Another great thing is that there are different preset workspaces that InDesign provides with the best panels for whatever you are working on in these different categories. So let's say you're working on typography and you hit that workspace. So it's going to set it up so that it has the elements it thinks you need in order to do the typography. That's all I have for you today, but I will be doing future InDesign and Photoshop tutorials as well as videos on tips and tools to help you get clients and expand your business in the future. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And please also like this video and comment below letting me know any specific tools you would like more help with relating to InDesign. Thanks for sticking to the end and I will see you next time.